Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. You might have seen long propeller shafts connecting the engine with the differential setup in heavy vehicles like trucks. Do you know what is the significance of these universal joints on either side of these shafts? Well, that is our topic for today. We all know that the motion from the engine is transmitted to the wheels via shafts connected together by means of coupling. The transfer of motion will not be a problem when the shafts are connected in a straight line. But in the real case, the engine and the transmission elements are mounted over the frame, whereas the wheels are capable of moving up and down because of the suspension. This in turn results in changes in the angles between the shafts. Therefore, the coupling connecting the shafts should be made flexible for permitting changes in the angle. This can be made possible by using universal joints. A universal joint is a flexible mechanical joint that connects two rotating shafts. It can transmit motion even when the shafts are inclined. A universal joint is almost used in all machines that have long rotating shafts. It is predominantly used in automobiles. Right now, you can see a universal joint here. Let's dismantle it into individual parts to understand its construction. The Y-shaped parts that you see here are called the yokes, and there is also an intermediate cross member here. The opposite ends of the cross member are connected to the yokes, and the yokes are in turn attached to the shafts. This peculiar arrangement of the yoke and the cross member makes the coupling to transmit motion even when they are inclined. Let's see what happens when the shafts are connected in a straight line. When the driving member rotates, the shaft connected to it rotates as well. The rotation of the shaft makes the yoke turn the cross member. The turning cross member in turn rotates the driven shaft. In this case, the speed of the driving and the driven shaft will be the same. Now, what happens when the shafts are held at a certain angle? Well, when the driving shaft rotates, the cross member, in addition to turning, spins because of the angular alignment. When the shafts are lined at certain angles, the plane of rotation of both the shafts will be different. The spinning of the cross member permits the driven shaft to rotate at a different plane. Thus, the motion gets transmitted irrespective of the angular position of the shaft. As the motion of the driving shaft is utilized for both turning and spinning of the cross member, the output speed and the input speed will not be the same. For every half rotation of the input shaft, the direction of spin of the cross member changes with respect to the rotation of the output shaft. Now, you can notice that the spin of the cross member and the rotation of the shaft acts in the same direction. Meanwhile, they act in different directions during the next half. The speed of the output shaft varies in a cyclic manner for every half rotation, and the varying speed of the output shaft results in unwanted vibrations. In order to avoid this, two universal joints can be used. When two universal joints are placed on either side of an intermediate shaft, the variation in speed caused by the first joint will be compensated by the other, resulting in constant speed. So guys, that's all about the universal joints. Wait for more interesting videos like this in the upcoming days. Until then, bye.